Uh, we have R. Don Steele on the phone now, who's the author of Body Language Secrets, A Guide During Courtship and Dating, and also the book that I'm interested in talking about, How to Date Young Women for Men Over 35. Hi, can I, do I call you R. Don or Don? You can call me tomorrow, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been dating younger women since you were 36 years old. Right? Actually, 32. How old are you now? 64. And uh, and how come? What's, what's the deal with younger women and you? Oh, I love young women. They are the most alive, energetic, optimistic, full of them vigor and vitality on the entire planet. And they have very little baggage. Have you ever dated an older woman? I went out with a 38-year-old in 19... Uh, b- 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 oh, wow. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Before I started taking my Alzheimer's pills. You know, it's really interesting because I, I'm just going to be honest. When I when I talk to older men who are into dating younger women, and I'm, as I was sort of getting ready to talk to you, my initial reaction is for my little hackles to rise and for me to get all feministly defensive and, you know what, older women aren't good enough for you. But you know what? We've been spending this whole show talking about older women being with younger guys, and that feels totally okay to me. So I think it should be totally okay for an older guy to decide to only date younger women. So I'm not going to judge you or get all or make you get all defensive because I think it's fine. So I am putting myself out there and acknowledging my prejudice and pushing it aside. Well, I'm glad you're not too uptight about it. I was on Jenny Jones and she gave me a hard way to go, and Montel gave me a hard way to go, and and that's uh, that's all. You mean they gave they gave you a hard? You mean because Montel ended up marrying somebody much younger. Sometimes it sells books. Why should I be sexist about it? could be sexist. <laughs> I'm an ageist myself. <laughs> you are. Yeah, I mean, that's what pisses women off. I mean, that's what older women listening are saying right now. That jerk, I'm not good enough for him. You know, what are you saying? That I'm not vital? What are you saying? That I'm not fun and vivacious and interesting? You know, in your experience, you find that younger women do it for you. And I think a lot of men do. So... On the flip side, in dating younger women, what problems have you had? You know, what are the disadvantages? The advantages are obvious. Well, the advantages aren't obvious. To most most people go in, into the sugar daddy. That's what he's doing. It's all about money. The other one is, uh, well, she's got a father complex problem. They don't understand what's really going on, at least in my life. I've been dating young women since I was 32, and I've probably been out with 70-plus young women. I'm married to Joanna. She's 30. I met her when I was 53, and she was 19. We've had a wonderful 11 years together. Wow. Tell us in a nutshell, I mean, besides the sex. Besides the sex. Let's see. Besides the sex, there's sex, and then there's sex. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that'd be a hard one for you to answer. Well, no. Putting sex aside, what's the advantage? Optimism and hope, uh-huh. uh, and a chance to do it over again. But older women can have optimism and hope? I think a lot of older women are optimistic. I mean, I'm 35, and I feel like I have a healthy dose of optimism. 35? Yeah. Oh, my God. No, but, you know, (laughs) when you were 40, you wouldn't have dated me. It depends. Or when you were 35, you wouldn't have dated me. You would have been 14. You'd have no, been no, no. If I was, if I, if today, (laughs) if today you were 35, you would not date me. It would depend. It would depend on a tremendous amount of things. It isn't just the age. It's your attitude, your joy of life, right. how much baggage you're dragging around, how much you blame men for your problems, right. and so on. So, a so lot you of, just find I agree that with you, number-wise, there are a lot of women who are uh, 70 who have a joy of life and, yeah. and are, I enjoy talking with them, heaven's sakes. But would you have sex with percentages, them? Percentages here. You enjoy talking with them, but would you be attracted to oh, them? Oh, God, no. Physically, no. They, they look like uh, my grandmother. So you have to have that. Physically attractive, much younger. But you guys stop laughing. You have the guys in the studio cracking up and nodding. I'm telling the truth. This is the part that they're getting into. (laughs) They've been very quiet the whole time except this about the saran wrap. And now they're getting. Saran wrap? What's that? That was a different story. (laughs) But maybe something that you'd like to try with your much younger wife. No, no, she doesn't wrap me in saran wrap. Uh, We do everything first here in California. (laughs) Well, you know, listen to the Dr. Laura Berman show. You might get some new ideas of some new trends you can start. I used to watch it on TV when it was on TV out here. The Berman and Berman show. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I have all the guys uh, watch you. Okay. Now I, I just see you're on Discovery, so I'm going to send them all over there because yeah. a lot of men don't understand women, and you you are very blunt and truthful about how sexual women really are. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, yeah. that's one of the points I try to get them to understand. Women are 
women are men uh, in lots of ways, and men are women in lots of ways, and let's don't get into a big fight about it. Right. I want to read out, I was reading these um, in your book, uh, The Eleven Commandments of Courtship, and I just want to read them out really quickly because I thought it was really funny, and thou shalt have a slim trim. This is the, the Eleven Commandments of Courtship for the older man who wants to date a younger woman. Thou shalt have a slim trim body. Thou shalt be well groomed, be dressed right, smell good, be relaxed and confident, shake hands and smile, talk at her level, radiate no lust, laugh appropriately, remain adult, and genuinely compliment once. Now, the two that stood out to me, this is obviously to kind of make an approach toward a younger woman or try to initiate a romance or a romantic encounter with a younger woman. Um, the two that really struck me was, Thou shalt genuinely compliment once. So you're basically saying, don't give some cheesy, breezy, hey, baby, you're, you know, hot, and keep talking about how fabulous she is. Right. Um, and the other is to radiate no lust. <laughs> and yes. is that to stay away from, like, the dirty old man image? Most young women are uh, brainwashed by culture to think that all men over 35 are dirty old men. Right. The parents uh, <laughs> tell them, you know, men are only interested in one thing, you know. And she's already had some encounters with her history teacher in high school. But why is it okay for a younger man if she's talking, if she's 30 and she's talking to another 30? And I want to come back to the history teacher in a second because that was interesting. But if he's, but if she's 30 and he's 30 and he's radiating lust, it's not going to turn her off. But if, it, it depends. It depends. But if she's 30 and he's 65 and he radiates lust, she gets grossed out. No, what's happening is she she's expecting him to be chasing her for sex. Right. I got you. So you have to you have to present yourself as number one. You have to be attractive. You have to look like somebody she wants to talk with. So that means you have to be dressed right. You have to be slim and trim. Right. You can't have a comb over. <laughs> you know, so, you can't, so your yellow teeth have got to right. go. Lots of things. And you thankfully, have to, now you can be bald and really hot. Yeah. That's well, amazing. I don't know whether you can be hot, but you can no, that's be very bald. that's very uh, in right now. You know, people are shaving their heads to. Right, I'm against everything trendy. Yeah. Everything. Except Especially dating for older younger, men. Do except not dating younger young. women. Don't wear an earring. Don't get a tattoo. Ah, that's good advice. And a million more. But anyway, the hit, uh, young women come on to you, they're very scared of you. And they're very attracted to how powerful you are compared to Jimmy with his ball cap on backwards right. and his Miller Lite beer. <laughs> and where do you meet? Where, sh where should they meet the uh, young women? Well, the best women? place to meet a young woman is at a wedding. Ah, they're, the girls are all scoring, uh, cheering because somebody just fun. scored a touchdown from their team, and they're drinking champagne, and right. there's a large age difference among the people at the wedding, so right. you don't stick out like a Right, it's not like you're the guy sitting at the bar scoping out the younger yeah. women in the room. Never go to a bar. It's yeah. absolutely stupidest place in the world yeah. for anybody of any age. Yeah, it's not a good place the to opposite sex. It's just, Unless you are 21. <laughs> yeah, even if you're 21, it's really stupid. Everybody's yeah. playing games and lying and cheating and stealing, and it's nonsense. So, in the, do you want to know how I really feel about bars? <laughs> <laughs> in the book, you refer to is it Rapo or Rapo? Rapo, that's Eric Eric Byrne. Games people play. It's called Rapo. Ah, and what is it? Left over from the 60s, 70s, the uh, potential movement. Uh -huh. Byrne was famous for explaining all the things people do as a game. The version is is that she wants the man to make a pass in front of an audience so she can reject him, then all the, every, all the other men think she's a virtuous girl. Huh. So when an older man makes a pass at her in public, she can go, what kind of a girl do you think I am? And then she has proven to all the boys with the ball caps on backwards and her Budweiser's that she's a potential wife. Right. So that's called Rapo. Rapo players are all the same the world over, no matter whether they're 14 or 50. They're very smooth. They're very sexy. To them, it's just a game. They're not nervous. They're not excited. For me, they're very easy to spot because it's just too good to be true. What do you mean? They look too good to be true, or they act? They act like, oh my God, you're so sexy. So the girl, the one, the rapo players are trying to ensnare you. No, no, they're trying to put them. you down in public. Right, but they're trying to ensnare you to make a pass. Make a pass. They encourage public. you to make the pass so that they can then shoot you down so that they look good for the other people in the room. For the men. Those for the evil young boys. women. Well, I want to talk to you more. Will you stay with us uh, through the break? Because I want to talk more about some of the phases of courtship you talk about and any future plans about maybe marrying younger women next after dating them. We'll be right back. I've married one. <laughs> and the Dr. Two, Laura Berman. Three. Yeah. <laughs> you have a new book called Body Language Secrets? Yes. What's in that? 
That's Body Language Secrets for Courtship and Dating. It's written for men and women. There's a lot of time spent on women trying to teach them how to spot a liar very quickly. Right. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I should read that. Well, that's the essence of, of the problem. Men approach the wrong woman. Women are hustled by BS artists. But I get these questions like, I just went out to visit him and found out he was with another woman, and he told me he's not with her anymore, but he's not ready for commitment. Should I believe him? You know, <laughs> not even should I believe him. Am I wrong to wait for him? And I'm like, stop kidding yourself. Why Women are so quick to lie to themselves and kid themselves and believe anything. I think most women can spot a player pretty quickly, but it's the guy that isn't dressed like a player who has got his act down to the point where he's just a user. He's not going to make a commitment, but he kind of pretends like he's going to make a commitment. And basically, it's during conversation on the first and second, third date. After that, I think if a woman is self-deceived to the point where she's going to ignore all these signals, that she really wants to try to convert this guy into to Mr. Right. We were just talking about this the other day with, with some of the girls in the office who are single and dating, and they say, why is it that they say, they go to all this trouble, they talk to you all night, they ask you for the number, your number, they tell uh-huh. you they want to get together with you, and then they never call. What's the reason? Well, it's always in a bar, right? No, it might be at a party or you know, they may not know, they'll have a lot of mutual acquaintances. Then they usually will call because they feel obliged to. But if they don't have a lot of mutual acquaintances, you know, where they were at like a small uh-huh. dinner party, but if they were at like a big wedding or a big uh-huh. event or a charity event or something like that, and they gave their number, you know, they asked for your number, they make a big deal right. about it, and then they don't call. Why mm-hmm. do they do that? See, I used to be a shrink. I was in private practice for mm-hmm. 15 years, and I worked with Brandon for five years. And this is constant, is that a woman has to be assertive. And she says, how about you give me your number? You know, in other words, yeah, that's a good point. responsibility for yourself, whip out your pen, act like you're going to write it down. Yeah. Say, how about if I call you? Is it best to call you? Because a lot of these guys are married. They're jerking around. Yeah. It's another uh, way to spot a liar. They have a girlfriend, and they're just trying to prove to themselves that I could have got her if I wanted to. Just believe, and I and I teach in all my workshops and everything, is you've got to take responsibility. Yeah. Man or woman, you want to talk to the guy, say, you know, I really enjoy talking with you. Let's exchange phone numbers. How about give me your number, and I'll call you next week, and let's have coffee. Join us next week. For more on the Dr. Laura Berman Show, until then, here's to better sex. You deserve it.